Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's South Africa versus Portugal reflections, an opportunity to look back at the game last night, um, a few hours later, well, several hours later, um, from um, the game, to be able to sort of have a bit of a better, fair reflection about certain players, the situation, and what the future is of this team as we continue to evolve uh, moving on to the 2027 Rugby World Cup. Seven debutants yesterday, uh, four of them actually ending up on the uh, the, the try scorers list as well as the first international try for Ben Jason Dixon, for example, a hat trick for Makazola Mpimpi. So, quite a lot to look at with regards to where do we go from here. And uh, tomorrow we're going to be putting out a um, a video about the rugby championship squad, for example, in terms of you know where we what we think it's going to look like. Players who might have uh, put themselves into contention in being involved in the championship squad. We kind of go to a, probably a smaller sort of thirty five man squad will be sort of where I imagine. Um, it will be before we do that please do smash the like on the video please do subscribe to the channel as well let's start with the debate on everybody's lips right now and that is the number 10 um debate because we saw yesterday two very different performances um in Molly Leibach and Sasha Feinberg Gomezulu at 10 um with regards to how they kicked off the boot and uh, that is a very for me a very simplistic way of looking at it but what is the big conversation at the moment so yesterday, Martin Liebach, um had a 40% um, success rate off the tee, um, missing, uh, converting just two. One of them was a touchline conversion. It was ridiculously hard, and uh, he managed to nail that. But missed far too many straightforward opportunities, as well as turning down three points when uh, Thalmerad actually wants it, uh, which is a bit of a strange thing as well. Uh, in comparison, Mon um, such Martin Gomez really came on and nailed five out of five. You know, um, Ten points to his name, two try assists as well. Terrific performance off the bench. Um, but what I think what we people are forgetting and what people have not highlighted enough is just how good my Ebok was besides off the tee. And, you know, a lot of people are sitting there saying, well, that's irrelevant. It's not irrelevant because there are so many players in the world, you know, who are fantastic 10. So many teams, for example, where their 10 doesn't do the goal kicking and doesn't have the responsibility. Um, but South Africa is not one of those teams. And it, it begs a very interesting question. How do we get this right? Because yesterday... The box went down to 10 men, and yet after a short period of time, just dominated, started to dominate and, and controlled the game. And I think so much of that has to be credited to Mike Leibach and the way he took charge of that game. And, and his open play yesterday was absolutely superb. The amount of line breaks, for example, the space he was creating, his kicking from hand was sublime. He was so, so good. And his defense was very good. He was brilliant in every single facet of the game yesterday, except off the tee. And... Uh, it's a problem because the fly for South Africa has to kick. You know, that's just one of those things that is that is that has become um a non a non-starter. You know, that's why Hundred Park, for example, I call Hundred Park came in last year towards the end of the World Cup and and was so good. But the fact of the matter remains the box attack better, look better with ball in hand when my lead box plays. That I don't even think these days is an opinion. I think that's just a fact. Um, you know, we know that he's our best attacking fly half, and I will include Satfan Gomezu in that statement, as well as a, a Damien Billups, for example, even when he plays 10. Our best attacking 10 in the country is Marini Bok. The box play the best when he plays. We've seen that. We've got evidence of it. Scotland, for example. Um, you know, even against Ireland, you know, we played pretty well. Um, in uh, France and, and uh, you know, for, for, for that half when he played. Um, yes, he was missing a few kicks, but we, we looked like we scored more tries. We do score more tries when he's on the field. But his goal kicking is not where it needs to be. And, um, you know, how do we get that right? So, in comparison, look, Sash Prime McGovern's really yet came on yesterday and put in a pretty complete performance. You know, there's two try assists, uh, missed the kick from touch, for example, and missed the tackle, which results in the try. So, those are sort of the two blemishes on what was otherwise a, a very accomplished performance. Um, looked very comfortable as well. Yes, against Portugal, but um, had some very good moments against Ireland. I think we all know long term, Sash Prime McGovern's will probably become the number 10 for the box full time. And probably very soon as well. Could even be by the next World Cup. But what do we do? A lot of people talking about the fact that we need to disregard uh, Maiba, which I think is really, really poor. You've now got three very different fly halves in that you've got an incredible attacking fly half in Maiba. You've got a big defender, Mr. Consistency, BMT in Andre Pollard. And you've got the next generation, Sash Famigama Zulu, who is a bit of a blend, to be perfectly honest. Um, he is, from a skill set point of view, got the skills to become a you know the perfect fly half you know and, and a player that likes to take him to the line good turn of pace decent distribution nice solid defender as well as a, a really good um, off the tees kicking game in general player i mean yesterday we saw at 50 22 for example which was incredible so he's got all the tools 
He just needs experience. Um, but I genuinely think that he will benefit immensely from playing with a Manny Leibach who sees space and uh, and uh, creates space like no other fly half in this country can. So it's an interesting debate. I personally think that we've got to keep Manny Leibach around, um, but we've got to try and find a way of how do we get the best out of him. Does this mean that that Van Gogh for example, starts at 15 um, and takes on the goal-kicking duties in, in big tests, for example? Maybe Dane Vincent moving to a 12 you know, in the future. Obviously, Dane Vincent is not going to get dropped yet, but how do we get the best out of these various different players so that we can try and make sure we've got the best blend on the field of, of players who are going to score, are going to help create tries and get us to score tries, as well as be able to knock over those penalties, those conversions, and keep that scoreboard ticking. An interesting debate, isn't it? Um, the other big, big, big one for me yesterday was Ben Jason Dixon starts until Spears' death the toy comes back, as far as I'm concerned. Looked so incredibly comfortable, yet high work rate, um, big physicality, big shift, scored a try, and he is a Peter Steph the Toy Mold player. I mean, we've, we've all been saying it for a long time. I've been a massive fan for him the entire year. And, um, you know, it was no surprise to me yesterday when I saw, what I saw from him because we've been seeing it at the Stormers. He's been looked like he's looked like a million bucks this season. And um, that injury to Peter Steph the Toy, whilst it doesn't sound like it's too serious, thank goodness, until he's ready, I'd have no issue in backing long term uh, Ben Jason Dix because I think he is the potential success. And I think that he was absolutely terrific yesterday. Um, other notable performances, I think that, um, you know, I think Evan Rose, for example, maybe missed his opportunity. Um, once again, it was interesting, we did a poll during the watch along um, about uh, who should be our number eight Jasper Visa, Quaka, Quaka Smith, Cameron Honeycomb, and Evan Rose. And uh, Quaka Smith actually got the majority by quite a lot with 50%. And next best, I think, was Jasper Visa and then Cameron Honeycomb. So, yeah, I think Evan Rose has had a couple of opportunities now, hasn't quite taken it. So, I think that's been a bit disappointing. But apart from that, I was really impressed with most of the, of the, of the debuts yesterday. Ruan Fenter looked at home um, at 21 years old. I thought coming off the bench, um, Andrew Gafenta looked pretty pretty solid. Pepsi Butelazi looked really solid as well. So it was a very interesting uh, uh, game yesterday. So lots of lessons learned. Uh, I think what we also showed is that we, there is that attacking mindset that we, that we can bring. But um, we are also at the moment far, far, far too, um, too much space you know, to, to defend, which is difficult to assess from yesterday. You know, we can see too many trial things at the point I'm trying to get. Uh, and we're looking a little bit sometimes, at, at some times, a little bit defensively fragile. Now, yesterday is a horrible game to look at from that perspective because you're a man down for six, 78 minutes, at least a man down, and sometimes two men down for 15 minutes. Um, so it's a difficult game to, to assess, but I think what the frustrating thing is, is that what we saw yesterday was Portugal turning our mistakes into tries. You know, not necessarily just, or into really good chances, not necessarily just um, a case. You know, I mean, that, that, that last try at the end, for example, the two cross kicks to the space, that's purely a numbers issue. But I think what we saw yesterday was an ability by Portugal to convert our mistakes into opportunities, which is something we need to be very cautious about with our new attacking game plan, with a new attacking shape, different players in and around the, the, the park, players that might not be able to scramble if we do make mistakes as much as in your sort of more traditional um, um, structures. So, so that's some of my takeaways from my lessons. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.